Inside Science. By the end of December, the big coronavirus news was about the spread of three new viral strains. One in the UK, one in South Africa, and most recently, one in Nigeria. So, what do we know about these new strains? Well, I'm going to focus on the UK variant, because it's been around the longest, and it's the one that we know most about. It's called B117, and it's suspected to be more infectious than other viral variants. The UK authorities think that because it seems to be spreading faster. On November the 18th, 28% of coronavirus infections in the capital, London, came from variant B117. Three weeks later, that had risen to 62%. And that's according to the UK government's Office of National Statistics. Now, that alone doesn't necessarily mean that this virus strain actually transmits better. It could still be down to chance movement of different infected populations. But there is evidence emerging about B117's genetic code that also suggests it's a more virulent variant. Now, this is an evolving story, so much of the information is from preliminary data. It hasn't been peer-reviewed yet. But there is evidence that B117 has mutated a lot in a short time, which is unusual. Normally, coronavirus strains mutate slow enough for researchers to track each mutation as it comes in, but B117 suddenly appeared with 17 different mutations from its nearest genetic neighbor. Now, this might have happened because the virus spent a long time in one patient giving it a chance to mutate many times before being registered by scientists again. Now, it's thought that these genetic changes could affect B117's action. Two changes stand out. Mutation N501Y changes how the coronavirus attaches to the body's cells. It basically makes the virus stickier to its target ACE2 receptor on the cell surface. And it does this by altering the structure of the viral spike protein. A virus that sticks stronger could be more infectious. There has also been a short RNA deletion in B117 in a sequence again coding for part of the spike. Now, this deletion may help the virus to escape from antibodies of the immune system. And that insight comes from a patient who was treated with anti-coronavirus antibodies. And the treatment had an unintended effect. It acted like Darwinian selection, weeding out all the virus strains susceptible to the antibodies, but leaving resistant strains, including those with this specific RNA deletion. Although again, we need to be wary as this data has not yet been peer reviewed. And the whole picture still isn't clear. B117 also carries another mutation that has been thought to decrease viral transmissibility. So it's unsure how that could fit in with this variant being more infectious. Since the UK reported the rise of B117 in the run-up to Christmas, other countries in Europe, as well as Japan and Australia, and now the US, have reported cases of the new strain. There's less known about the spread of the South African and Nigerian variants, but they both share some of the same mutations as the UK's, and South African researchers have reported that their new strain is also more infectious. But thankfully, there's no evidence that any of these strains are more deadly although we won't have data on this until it can be tested in animals, which should start happening early in the new year. The vaccines will hopefully be effective against all three new strains. In testing, Pfizer's new vaccine was found to be effective across various variants, and despite its genetic differences, even B117 is still 99% similar to those tested strains. And if the vaccines really did need modifying, this could be done in a matter of weeks, thanks to the way that the vaccines are designed. But it hasn't been all COVID in the world of science this month. For a start, other diseases haven't gone away. And now researchers have published a new technique that paves the way to study cancer in much greater detail. And it's kind of gross, but amazing. This is an organoid. It's a bundle of cells in a Petri dish, but they've grown into a structure, one that mimics certain aspects of a human organ and they look a little bit like organs too. You can grow a tiny underdeveloped heart or a lung or even a brain, but these organoids have a problem. They're not very complicated, not nearly as complicated as a real human organ. And that's an issue if you want to study a complex disease like cancer. Step forward, Kun Yu Shin's lab in South Korea. They took the organoids concept to the next level. They started with a simple bladder organoid. Then they added layer upon layer of different kinds of cells, eventually building up a structure that was much closer 
to real human bladder tissue, 90% similar, although much smaller than an actual bladder. They call this structure an assembloid. These assembloids can be used to study human organ tissue approaching the complexity of actual live tissue, but in a petri dish, rather than having to get in and do it inside an actual person. And then the Shin Lab went one step further. They made up some of those assembloids with cancer cells. That gave them a working model of bladder cancer in a dish. This assembloid model helped them reveal a new chemical signaling pathway in the tumours, one that controls how a tumour will develop. Incredible, right? Although still kind of icky. And last but not least, let's take a break from the world and go to Mars. An international team have simulated the early atmosphere from around 4 billion years ago on the red planet. They find that with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and hydrogen, Mars could have sustained a surface temperature above water's freezing point. A relatively warm climate like this would also explain a mysterious piece of Martian geology, what appear to be ancient river systems carved into the planet's rock. A climate above water's freezing point would free up enough liquid water to form rivers, rain, and a huge ocean covering the northern part of Mars. Perhaps the red planet, like Earth, was once blue too. And that's it from me. But before you go, stay in space for a little while longer with this fascinating article about building telescopes on the moon. Stay safe. Goodbye. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.